Randy was supposed to be up here, and yesterday he he said he was sick. So can we give a big awe to Randy? And then we're going to pray for him after service. But I'm hoping he feels better. So I had a limited amount of time to prepare a message for you. But I want to ask everyone, we've been going through the series of Most Likely To, what have we been talking about the past two weeks? Anyone know? Leadership, yeah, that's actually right. And we've been talking about leadership and the ways to become a great leader. So in week one of the series, we talked about how great leaders follow through on all their actions. And then week two, we talked about how great leaders love one another. And even when it gets difficult, we should still uh, love those around us. But now we're going to be talking about how great leaders choose integrity. And if you guys didn't notice, oh, if, so with the raise of hands, sorry, uh, who knows what integrity is? Okay, it looks like a couple of you do. So the definition of integrity is to doing the right thing even when no one is looking or watching you. Uh, integrity can be uh, super funny, honestly, uh, but having no integrity can be even funnier. Who likes pranks? Pranks. Some of them can be harmful. Some some of them can be harmless. But I have a funny video of sh someone sh not showing integrity. And we'll play it right now. Uh, so, as you saw, if you guys didn't notice, there was a man standing right behind them while they're having the first conversation. And when he was asking him about the mask, he was clipping on balloons to him on the back. And so when he stopped the conversation, uh, the dude took the balloons and walked away. Um, so it was really funny. But then he came back, and they did it again. I just thought it was a hilarious example of people not showing integrity. Um, but the truth is, even though it is funny, um, Integrity is super important to our everyday lives. Now you may be thinking, right, that I am lying to you all, that integrity can't really mean all that much. But the truth is, is that we expect others to live with integrity while we don't want to. Um, I'm gonna say it again. We expect others to live with integrity while we don't want to. And so how do we learn about more about integrity? Well, let us all kind of reflect on times when we really haven't shown integrity in situations. Uh, we've all had times where we cut corners to get ahead. Um, maybe if it was uh, procrastination on an art project that your parents had to do for you, or maybe you heard from a friend that an answer key to an exam uh, was pe being passed around. You didn't feel very confident about taking exams. And so you asked your friend or classmate uh, if they could send the answers to you so you didn't have to put as much time into learning or really creating material. Um, but the point is that none of us are perfect and that we've all had times when we've made mistakes uh, and had lapses of judgment or try taking e the easy way out of situations. But the best way to lead, and we are truly helping ourselves, Sorry, but this is the best way to lead, is showing integrity. And we have to kind of think to ourselves, are we really tr truly helping ourselves by cutting these corners? Uh, we all know this, but maybe it's not so apparent, but cutting corners and not showing integrity in situations can ruin trust that we've built from people. For example, I want you guys to think of a Christmas present that you really want for Christmas this year. It can be whatever you want. It doesn't have to be anything specific, but it's something that you uh, want. So, for example, I have a PlayStation, a guitar, maybe some t uh, concert tickets to a concert you really want to go to. Um, but after church day, well, say hypothetically, that your parents ask you, hey, what do you want for Christmas? And then you say one of these things or whatever you have in your mind. And then your parents promise you and say, okay, we will get that for you for Christmas. We will uh, buy you that you will be going to that concert. So you wait for the next few months and Christmas morning comes around and everyone's having a lot of fun. You get downstairs and you start opening your presents and you notice after you're unwrapping one by one, your present that they promised you was underneath the tree. And you, that was something that you were looking, really looking forward to, to getting. And so can you imagine the disappointment you would feel that Christmas morning the trust that your parents built with you would somewhat be broken. Obviously, this is kind of um, too much. Like, your, your faith in your parents and trust in them wouldn't be 
shattered, but it would hurt, and you wouldn't be able to trust them on um, things that they promise you in the future. In this hypothetical situation, your parents promised you what you wanted most, but they didn't show integrity and they didn't follow through. So how can we learn from this example and become leaders whose actions match who we say we are? Well, we can learn more about integrity by turning to the Bible and to see what it says. And I want to remind you that everything in the Bible is historical, and meaning everyone and everywhere in this was real, and it did happen in a certain place at a certain time. And today we'll be diving into the book of Philippians, where we will be following a, a murderer, wow, um, who in a period of his life absolutely despised Christians and everything they stood for. This man persecuted Christians, tortured them, and would go door to door to see if there was any Jesus followers gathering in the houses so he could drag them off to jail and uh, maybe even murder them. Does anyone know what this man's name is? Uh, it did change to that, but what was his original name? Saul, yes. See, Saul. I'm just kidding. Um, but he was a murderer, and he would go to people and he would try to put them in prison. And then he comes up randomly one day and says he has an encounter with God and his whole life was changed, including his name, which was changed to Paul. So Paul, during the book of Philippians, was one of the apostles. An apostle was uh, sort of a teacher in the early church days and became one of the church's most influential early leaders. And fun fact, he also writ, wrote, wrote seven of the books of the New Testament that we have today. And so, as you can imagine, that was pretty crazy for the church in that time. This isn't exactly uh, the equivalent is, but imagine a person known for murdering Christians uh, murder the person sitting right next to you. They're dead. Um, and then, as time passed, this murderer out of the blue one day says that they now follow God's words and want to be a part of your small group and preach to you like I am up here. Uh, so, it's just it's pretty crazy that... Um, a murder would change up that quickly. Um, but people in the time must have thought he was pretending to be a Christian and just waiting for the right moment to strike and murder them all. But Paul went from someone who sought to persecute Christians to being some, someone Jesus' followers trusted. Can you imagine how Paul's decision and the way he caused pain in the past affected his relationship with other people who were following Jesus? Imagine how much energy and time he put into gaining each other's trust from the other Christians back and how much uh, he had to take to rebuilding that trust uh, for the church that he was trying to create. So after eventually rebuilding some trust that Paul eventually joined a small community of Jesus followers in modern day Greece. And he said this in Philippians chapter four, verses eight through nine to the church of Philippi. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Then he goes on to continue and say, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. So as you can kind of see, uh, Paul's life was so different from what it had been like before. He went from a murderer to someone that follows Jesus. And the way he gained back their trust was being so consistent with the church community um, and just giving back to him that through his actions and eventually his words, he could say, um, he could use himself as an example and say, watch and learn from my life. So I want you to make a mental note that anyone can say they've changed, but the only way someone would believe a leader like Paul is if they saw a difference in how his actions lined up with his words. Paul said he was a Christ follower and then put it into action. He didn't just say he was and then continu continued killing Christians. He actually lived out being a Christ follower by giving back and serving and uh, say, not talking behind people's backs. And so um, Paul's action matched his words, showing us what great leadership looks like. And he regularly and consistently lived out the things he believed in in every part of his life. As he lived with integrity, he earned the, the trust of people who used to want to harm him. And so scripture encourages us to be someone who lives out the good, beautiful, and noble things that we say we believe, not only when we're alone, but also when we're a small group or with trusted friends and family and when we live publicly like uh, work or school. This was how Paul modeled what it means to live with integrity, and we're invited to do the same and lead in a way that reflects who we are, but also who God is. As that, and as we do this, we become leaders with integrity, uh, leaders people can trust, and I can truly see that 
in all of you guys that you guys can become great leaders and you guys are great leaders. Uh, you guys can lead and be an example for others, even though you may not feel like anyone's watching you right now. You may have a younger sibling who looks up to you or even the friend right next to you. Whether you like it or not, you will always be someone who somebody looks up to. So how do we lead those who are following us in the right direction? Well, it is through gaining trust. For example, take a look at this boat. Isn't that a pretty boat? Pretty boat? Okay, cool. Uh, so if I asked you to take a ride in this boat, would you? Yes. Anyone else got a different answer? No, okay. Everyone wants to take a ride in the boat. So sure, it looks stable, uh, but can I ask you a few questions? Do you know who made this boat? Do you know if it was well made? Have you ever seen anyone ride this boat before? Uh, why would you trust this boat when you don't even know who made it? Almost all of us would trust this boat to hold us. If you've ever gotten into, onto a boat, you know that you likely wouldn't do an extreme amount of tests on it before taking it out in the water. It'd be silly to waste as much time as testing a boat than actually using it. So if we had this much skepticism, why wouldn't experience this the fun? Why wouldn't we experience the fun we could have actually on board the boat? And so why would we trust this boat? Well, most of us have experienced a boat whose structure has the integrity to hold us as we go out into the water. And this is kind of crazy to think about because when you're in a boat, water is constantly trying to get in. And while you're on the boat, the people steering and uh, living on the boat, not obviously this one, but like a cruise ship or something like that, uh, they're trying to keep the water out of it and make sure that integrity of the boat isn't compromised when taking on water. And it says in Proverbs 11.3, the integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. Does anyone know what duplicity means? Duplicity means deceitfulness. So the integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their deceitfulness. This verse contrasts two different ideas, saying that when we change and how we act depending on our environment in ways that conflict with what we value, we are choosing the opposite of integrity. For example, if you act differently at church than you do at school and vice versa, maybe you say words that you shouldn't typically say at church, or maybe you pick on someone at school but cover it up when you get here. Even though these are just examples, maybe you're thinking to yourself right now that, you know what, maybe he's right, maybe I am not living with integrity. If you truly love something, actions speak louder than words. So will you be physically destroyed for being honest? Probably not. Will people question if they can trust you and your leadership? The answer is most likely probably all great leaders get questions. I imagine we've all had experiences where someone kind of uh, kind to our faces but talks bad about everyone behind their back. And do you trust they aren't doing the same to you? Probably not. So we don't want to be friends, much less led by people who say one thing to your face but then another when you're not around. On the flip, flip side of things, if we are people who live with integrity, People who attempt to live in the good, beautiful, and noble things we say we believe in all the areas of our lives, we can expect to have tools that help guide us through life. Committing to being the same person, whether alone or surrounded by others, has a lasting impact on your leadership, friends, and future. When we become people who follow through on what God calls us to be about, the next step is to learn how to do that in every place we lead. Followers of Jesus should follow through on what God asks of us and choose to lead with love. Whether we're by ourselves with close friends or leading in public, we make a choice to live out those values as we do this, as we live out the truth that great, great leaders choose integrity. Because here's the crazy part. If you consider yourself a Christ follower, we are supposed to represent God to those who don't know him. You may be the only example of God that someone may ever see, and so even though we are not always perfect, we should always try to act with integrity. At times, we might miss the opportunity to live with integrity, but when it happens, we can attempt to make it right. So when it comes to living with integrity, here are three simple ways you can do that. Okay? At one, ask for God's help. We can't be dependable and trustworthy leaders on our own. The great, greatest leaders in Scripture learn on God's guidance. And every week, we've talked about how great leadership depends on staying connected to God. So this week, spend time with God in prayer and discover a passage in Scripture that helps you become a leader who follows through on what they promise. Ask God how you can be faithful and follow through. Second step, 
Invite others' help. Let other people know who you are, that you are choosing integrity and share with them and celebrate your ability to follow through on your promises. Uh, this could be with a mentor or a close friend that you trust. It can be whoever you want as long as they are a trustworthy individual. And integrity includes how you are living with people close to you. So be honest with trusted friends and family and encourage you to be, that I encourage you to be a leader who chooses integrity and be an example of our Heavenly Father. And then step three, keep going. In the Bible, you'll see that so many leaders failed and made mistakes, and we will too. That's life. We will never, ever, 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 ever be perfect. We won't always be the most trustworthy or dependable leaders around. So if you mess up, own up. Tell someone you trust and ask them to help you learn how to follow through. Uh, I am so thankful that you allowed me all to speak today. Um, you guys were a great audience. But before we go, I want to kind of bring this message all the way back around, and I want to ask you, you, you yourself, who are you, who are you being uh, when there's no one else is looking? Who are you? I'm going to pray for you all, and then we'll all be able to head out to our small groups.